much, Bronwyn. And meanwhile, they were both assistants under Richie Riley, who, oh, by the way, is coaching in a Sun Belt title game tonight, South Alabama against Louisiana. Yeah, yeah, South Alabama rolling, and I had the privilege, or I should say disprivilege, of coaching against him <laughs> when I was in the Southland Conference as an assistant at Lamar. Away we go. Nichols, the four seed. McNeese, the eight seed, playing on its home floor. First time the Southland tournament has been here in Lake Charles. Latrell Jones starts off Nichols with a three, and that's a great sign. He can be streaky good. Yeah, great way to start out when you haven't played and you haven't had the Oh, you have had to buy and you haven't had a pleasure of playing in the game to get your uh, those jitters out to make the first shot Definitely helps that process Christian Shoemate, 28 points 12 rebounds yesterday. He leads the conference in double doubles This is Zach Scott he put in 19 in their opening round win yesterday, had 12 of those in the second half. Yeah, he was a huge part of their victory yesterday, got really hot in the second half, and he's picking up where he left off. It's Jones and Scott, and a foul. These two met in the regular season twice in a span of three days back in the middle of January. I was talking with both coaches earlier, Brian. They both said, you know, it's like we haven't played in two years. Yeah, long time ago <laughs> that those two teams have played, and because of the way the schedule falls, sometimes it uh, it does go like that. One thing to keep an eye on in this game, I think, with the lack of depth and bodies that McNeese has, can Nichols continue to draw fouls on important players from McNeese so that they have to go deeper in their bench or even maybe have to face and play some lineups they don't want to play? Latrell Jones misses on the second free throw. That will be a storyline. The Colonels are the worst free throw shooting team in the conference, sub 65%. You figure they'll have to knock them down if they want to win a conference title here this week. Jonathan Massey, 13 points, eight assists yesterday. He was tremendous. Not a natural point guard. It's Shoemate in the lane. He muscles it up and off. Rebound Pierce Spencer. He had missed the previous five games with a hip injury. Nichols very happy to have him back. Yeah, I think he's a difference maker for this team. He's not as talked about as some of the other guys, but he might be their most valuable and important player for winning. There's Huffman. He can score in so many different ways. Yeah, he is a walking bucket is what, the, what they like to call players like him. Native of Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Started his career at Iowa Western, then Central Michigan, and he has been tremendous in Thibodeau the last couple years. It's Shoemate with a double team. Skips it off to Francois. They run him off the three-point line inside DeAndre Thomas, and he walks. Yeah, early look to keep an eye on and continue to watch. They double team Shoemate as he got it immediately. There was no hesitation. They sprinted, and then they are rotating and almost switching out of that, not caring who the matchups are. So they don't they don't plan on allowing Shoemate to beat them. The Nichols starting five. It looks a little bit different. Huffman Spencer back in there again, first time in five games. Jones Nelson and Eduardo Del Cadia, who has been a huge reason why they've had some success of late. No Manny Littles in this tournament for Nichols, out with personal reasons. But Jones is called for steps. Littles is Nichols's leading rebounder, so that'll be a storyline against a very good rebounding team in McNeese. Yeah, absolutely. McNeese loves to shoot it and be able to go get it off the offensive glass. Uh, ref called a good call there. Kind of slowed down his pace on his steps, and they called him for travel. The McNeese starting five. They've only got two others available outside of these five. Massey Scott, Francois Shoemate, their first-team all-conference pick, and DeAndre Thomas, who had a double-double his second straight Last night, an offensive rebound, Shoemate. That's where he is so good. This is the best offensive rebounding team in the conference. Around the horn, Francois for three. Bucket. Yeah, great ball movement, great penetration. Way to make the extra pass for an open look. And again, when you can get those shots to go down early, it does so much for your confidence and your psyche in a big game. Francois, tremendous three-point shooter. There is Pierce Spencer. And for the first time in six games, back into the scoring column. Yeah, I just absolutely love this young man's game. I love what he's about. Talking to other coaches in the conference about this particular matchup, they said if he plays, they think Nichols has a great advantage because he is a difference maker. Near knockaway by Huffman. It will stay with McNeese. Spencer is from Porter, Texas. He was on the all-defensive team despite only playing in 12 conference games. Ryan Maxwell on for the first time for Nichols, 10 and white. He's a sophomore from Jacksonville, Arkansas. He's 6'7". This is kind of the storyline with this program under Austin Klontzbrine. A lot of guys 6'6", 6'7", but long arms. He's got a 7-foot wingspan. 
Yeah, it goes to how coach likes to defend, really likes to get in the passing lane, be aggressive defensively, and make things hard on offensive uh, teams that they play against. So definitely a common theme, and it's been successful, I would say. Massey is off the mark. And another offensive rebound. Zach Scott reloads and connects. Zach Scott is in a groove in his home gym, and he has been shooting the ball lights out since the second half last night. Nichols has begun three for three. It's Huffman. And now Jones. Those two complement each other so well. Jones, tough two. He makes a lot of those, misses their rebound, Francois. Yeah, those are the shots McNeese wants them to be able to take. Those tough, contested twos, whether he makes them or not, those are the lowest percentage shots you can take. So Nichols will want to get higher percentage, whereas McNeese will definitely want to keep them shooting those same shots. High low look. Shoemate got position on Huffman, and McNeese has its first lead. Yeah, because of the switching on ball screens and the switching defenses that uh, the Colonels do that put a little bit of a mismatch where Shoemate had a great advantage and they threw it over the top. Shoemate's been in double figures 13 straight games. He's got four straight double doubles and seven in his past nine. Jones for Nelson. Mid range is true. Well, they're taking what you said McNeese will give them and knocking down, knocking down a few early. Yeah, that one was a little bit better off of a shot pick. You got a little more separation and rhythm. And talking to Nelson last night, he said. He is so excited to be here with Nichols. He's been in a lot of different Division One stops. This has been his favorite one, and the coaching staff was exactly what he was looking for in that personal relationship. They are fighting for a championship. To your point, Western Kentucky, then UTRGV before heading to Thibodeau. Shot clock to five for Shoemate, knocked away by Pierce Spencer. And he is all alone for the time being, but run down by Thomas. Oh, what a play in transition. Yeah, great hustle play right there. And then another play, championship level play, taking the charge is Nelson, winning plays. Back and forth we go. What a sequence this was. They're getting after it early here in Lake Charles. Special team in the Southern Conference. Anytime you can win a championship, just one, but then winning back-to-back -back says a lot about what Coach has done. But if you look at who won the Southland Conference tournament last year, Corpus was the four seed, right. so could be promising for Nichols to maybe have a little bit of pressure off them and not having that one seed. And oh, by the way, who did Corpus Christi knock off in the semis? Nichols, the top seed. Colonel Ball up a point. Merrick Nelson. And now Eduardo Del Cadia, who walks. And a turnover on Nichols, their second. They average about 14 per game as a group. Typically, their success is on how many times they can turn over the opponent and then create baskets off of that. Yeah, absolutely. They love to get defense, excuse me, offense from their defense and love to be able to get those uh, t pick sixes, if you will. They love to be able to get those live ball turnovers that they, you cannot defend. Six nationally, 17 and a half turnovers forced per game. And they nearly caused another. Shot clock inside 10 for Zach Scott. It's Francois for three. And the rebound down to Micah Thomas. He's dealing with a bad toe injury. It's Jones for three. Rebound Shoemate. Massey with that strong frame banks it off. Shoemate up, blocked by Nelson. It's Thomas for Nichols. Tyrese Terrell on for the first time as well. Two in white. Thomas pull back triple. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's in a groove right there in that groove shot. Nice high screen and roll, had space, hand down, man down, knocks it down. He only played in half their conference games. He's dealing with a toe injury that is going to require surgery in the offseason, so he's toughing it out throughout this tournament. Yeah, this team is made up of some gritty dudes, so not surprising at all. Shoemate, if he's hitting that, you're in for a long night. I'll tell you what, the, the, the evolution of his game, not a guy that just makes layups and points in the paint only from you know, kind of re being right there point blank. That soft touch, little mid-range fadeaway that he's worked on is really a nice weapon for his game. Jones loves that baseline turnaround. There it is, and fills it up for two. He's got six early points. Nichols leads by four. Again, they took both regular season matchups, including here in Lake Charles, by three. They won by nine in Thibodeau. Shoemate, and a foul. And he's so tough when he's downhill. Just a man possessed, picking up where he left off last night. Looks a little bit different. He's playing against some more size and athleticism. Doesn't matter, though. Doesn't stop the will and determination and the mindset. 
to just go get it out the mud and he definitely gets an and one past the floor he is playing some great basketball so far in this southland conference tournament you know you're a great player when you average 13 and a half points and eight and a half rebounds in the two matchups and austin clunch thinks they did a pretty good job that's how good this guy is yeah i, I would agree with that misses on that free throw he's been shooting free throws much better but he's only a 53 percent shooter for the season overall Nichols is six for nine from the fields. That one was partially deflected, and Roberts Burze who's in as the rebound. Yeah, great adjustment by Schumann. They try to run the same high ball screen. They got a three off of the play before, and he gets a block that time. Francois driving kick poked away out of bounds. And to Nichols it goes. Turnover number four already on McNeese. Yeah, that's what that's a it's kind of a bad matchup for McNeese in some ways because they have had some turnover issues this season. And that's what Nichols does best is force turnover. So that is definitely one of the big kind of keys to the game and keys to watch is uh, the turnover battle slash force turnovers from Nichols. 14 assists, only nine turnovers for McNeese in the round one win yesterday. Here's Spencer for Eduardo Delcadia, native of Senegalia, Italy. Backing down on Shoemate. Missed it. Rebound Scott. And McNeese has numbers with Delcadia slow to get back. Francois, quick trigger three. Huffman tried to rip the re rebound away, but Burze tracks it down. Love the way these teams are competing for loose balls and completing on the glass. You can definitely tell there's a sense of urgency on both sides. What a finish by Donovan O'Day. He had all six of his points yesterday in the second half. Including the game-stealing free throws, right. if you will. He really stepped up big. Spencer for three. Around and off. He's about a 32% three-point shooter. Nichols as a group, seventh in the conference in three-point shooting. Coming up on 11 to play. Shoemate passes up on a three to get a two and one. Dear mama, there goes that man. They know he doesn't shoot threes, but he's playing so well. The shot fake still works, and he gets another and one. Shoemate off to another. Who's becoming the first female to officiate a Southland Conference men's basketball tournament game. That is amazing. Yeah, I love it. As a father of three daughters, definitely want to celebrate uh, that. And hats off to the conference for acknowledging the hard work of some of the women behind the scenes. Christian Shoemate completes the three-point play. He's got nine first-half points after scoring 28 in their round one win yesterday over Texas A&M Commerce. Huffman for three. Tracks down his own rebound. Stops on a dime, fades away, missed it. There's Shoemate again to gobble it up. Six rebounds already. Yeah, again, those are the shots that they want him to shoot. Good job. Long range three, and then takes a, kind of another one of those mid range shots. So good job by McNeese sticking to their game plan. Massey off the bounce. Scott cut off well by Huffman. Works in the lane. His teardrop is true. Scott is cooking, cooking, and still cooking three in a row. Again, last, last night had 12 points. That was so crucial in the second half. They needed every single one of them as they won by one. Nine straight for McNeese to take its largest lead at five. Merrick Nelson against the small row day. Good dump off Ooh. feed. And there's Maxwell. Big time pass. That was a little no look. Behind the back bounce pass. I like to see it. Representing Plano East well. High school that I went to as well. Love Marik Nelson and have known him for a long time. That was the first thing you told me. He went to my alma mater. Got to represent the Panthers. There you go. He also spent the year at Sunrise Christian Academy in Kansas. Post grad year there. O'Day missed it. Thursday tips it in, but it was in the cylinder. And they will wave it off. John Aiken can't believe it. What do you think? Uh, pretty close. Not sure if it's something that they're going to review or not. It looked like it was a legit tip. But I love the sense of urgency to hustle, to go make extra effort plays. Close call. Spencer is short on a three. Nichols now two for seven from distance. And I mentioned they're not a great three-point shooting team, but they take a lot of them, about 23 per. That's out of bounds. That's a fifth McNeese turnover. And we talked about that as a huge, huge key. Only nine turnovers for McNeese in their round one victory. AM Commerce only produced 10 points off of those turnovers. Nichols typically thrives, forcing points off opponents' mistakes. We're inside the midway point of the first half. Dump off feed. Maxwell in the lane. Rebound Massey. 
Nichols has gone cold. They've missed seven of their past eight shots. It's O'Day on a three. Puts it in. O'Day. I mean, is having so many different players. Again, step up for them. The monkey off their back. Had to fight and claw to get into the tournament. And now they are really playing free and playing some outstanding basketball. Freshman from Arlington, Texas. who was terrific last night. Can Nichols get something started here on the offensive end? It's Jones dancing on Thomas. Maxwell, corner pop off the mark. Rebound Hoffman. Jones will line it up and connects. That's a big hit. Their yeah. third three on eight tries. Yeah, much needed basket. And as you said, missed seven in their last eight. And McNeese has been on a 12 2 run. So answered the run right there with a three. And the big thing is, can the the Colonels stop McNeese. They've turned them over, but they're still shooting. McNeese is shooting 56% from the field. Nichols must get some stops. They've made four of the last five. Make it five of six. Jonathan Massey, a chance for one more. In a groove, this young man, you've talked about it, and we've mentioned it, him stepping into the role of playing the point guard, being the primary ball handler, and he's done an outstanding job, and his talent is really starting to flourish and show. He's getting comfortable. Coach has challenged him. Coach said he's responded, and he's really bought into the process of becoming a great player. And he's playing his best basketball at the right time, which is the ideal situation for a coach. Now you think about Trey English and what he meant to this team as that free throw is missed. I mean, English was number seven in the conference in assists. He was averaging four assists per game in Southland play. So you tell Massey, okay, we now need you to become a passer when he's a natural scoring guard. Yeah, natural scoring guard, but has a good feel for the game. He's got great size, which helps their defense as well. Micah Thomas fills it up from the outside. He's a transfer from Indiana State. This is his third school in three years. Yeah, again, another tough shot. McNeese is doing a good job. Nichols is making them, but you want to keep making a team shoot those tough twos over the course of a game in hopes that they start to miss. Three ball good. Roberts Burze, who's a tremendous three-point shooter. Yeah, I was told that he was here at 8 in the morning getting shots up. The first one, he beat the TV crew here <laughs> before the women's tournament. He's on a mission to make sure he makes an impact, too. I'm more impressed he beat you here. You sleep in the gym pretty much. <laughs> hey, gym rats, no other gym rats. Gotta love it. And great move on the reverse. Merrick Nelson finessing one up and in for his second field goal. Nichols has made the last three of their shots, as has McNeese. We're having a little bit of a shootout right now, both teams, and unfortunate turnover for the Cowboys. That's what's keeping Nichols in this right now. 60% first half shooting for McNeese, but they've now coughed it up six times. Ended up switching over and kind of changing their system defensively. That's been a big reason why they've had some success. And now away we go. Lead is 28-24 for McNeese. There's Huffman on the drive. Counted and one. Yeah, again, the walking bucket. Right out of a timeout. Great isolation to be able to get him to a strong hand. He's able to get the hoop in the hall. He's as quick as any player in this conference. Yeah, just one of those things on the baseline on, the, on that corner. You want you don't want to help off of a shooter, but you don't want to also let the best player offensively for Nichols be able to get going with a shot like that. Huffman is a native of Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Misses on the free throw. He has not shot free throws well. 52.5%. Of course, the Colonels have struggled as a team. He shoots about 41% from three, though. Lead is two for McNeese. Who have missed only one of their past seven shots. They've been on fire. 60% in the first half overall. Thomas got his own. Missed it again. And a foul. And they're just dominating the offensive glass right now. Six offensive rebounds already. Yeah, you said it. Best offensive rebounding team in this conference. And good job being to get some point blank shots. But goes and gets it with two hands. Fundamentally strong. And then going with it again. Two hand rebound and just a relentless effort. As I believe that might have been seven as they got two offensive rebounds in that possession. They're now up to seven offensive rebounds. Good catch. Thomas misses on that free throw. He is now 11 for 36 at the line this season. 
but he has been terrific these last couple of games. 12 and a half points, 11 rebounds, five and a half offensive rebounds. That includes his double double yesterday in round yeah, one. Yeah, offensive rebounds is really where he makes his mark. Just making sure he cleans up the other players' misses. You love a player that you don't have to draw plays for, but he can still impact on the offensive end. A lot of quick threes here from Nichols in the first half and have not been going down in a high clip. They're now three for ten from distance. McNeese has led by as many as six. Nichols by as many as four. Shoemate skips it. Extra pass, Scott. Open luck. Fight for the rebound. There's Shoemate to grab it again. And it's knocked around to Nelson. Colonel's in transition. Nelson for Thomas. Three for the tie. And Scott clears. Feels like Nichols is really relying on a three-point shot. Maybe a little more than they need to, but... Has not been able to quite go their way on that yet. See if that may be an adjustment that they decide to make. It's Massey right at Nelson. And an offensive foul. That's second charge he's taken. Yeah, that's not a stat that's going to show up. I see you tallying it right oh, now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> As a coach, you're programmed to chart these type of plays. These are championship plays. Even more than if somebody dunking on a player or making a three, coaches love to be able to rally behind guys, sacrificing their body, getting a foul on the other team, but also taking away a possession. Just a sign of that locked-in uh, nature that you want to have in order to win a ship. Six years of college hoops for Merrick Nelson, three schools. This is game number 130 of his career. I think he's taken a few charges over the years. You don't play in that many big games without doing that. Absolutely. Terrific young man. He's got some great future ahead of him, whatever he decides to do, whether that be in basketball and in life. Spencer gets a step on O'Day and finishes again, and he crashes into the cameraman. And one doesn't even matter. <laughs> I think the cameraman took the front of that one. I think you're absolutely right. Spencer's going to be feeling that one tomorrow, but today he doesn't care. He got the basket. It's a will on our camera crew. We appreciate him taking the charge there. Scott steps through and finishes. Scott is just grooving. He continues to stay in the kitchen. He is getting it done in so many ways in the offensive end. Really ride that momentum from last night. He's a prolific three-point shooter, but his two-point game has been really good. The floaters, the mid-range. It's Nelson facing up on Shoemake across the lane. And there is Francois. No one on the glass for Nichols. Conversely, it feels like there's five McNeese Cowboys on the boards every time. Really does. Scott for three. There's Shoemate again. Another offensive rebound. What do you know? Who got the rebound? <laughs> the man on a mission, and now he goes to the basket with another and one. <laughs> this young man is unstoppable right now. Christian Shoemate already in double figures for a 14th straight game now. All starts with the offensive rebound. Again, a two-hand rebound. Kids at home rebound with two hands. And there you see him going to the basket again. Just an unstoppable force so far. I don't know if there's anyone that's played better or more on a mission than this young man in this tournament so far as he already has a double-double in the first half. He beat me to it. It's his fifth straight double-double and his ninth double-double in his past 11 games. Number 15 in the season. Merrick Nelson tries a three and puts it in. Big hit for Nichols. Nelson has seven first half points. He only averages eight and a half for the season. Yeah, it looks like they might have called it a two. I think she might have put her hands up saying it was a two, but another long range shot that not points in the paint. So give McNeese credit, although Nichols is making them, they have to find a way to get more points in the paint. Three and a half to go, opening half. Donovan O'Day. A true freshman surveying the scene and draws a foul. It's number six on Nichols. Nelson picks up number two. Well, we talked about this being a physical game. You got to be ready wherever you are on the floor. Training Texas school. You got a lot of Louisiana flavor. Southeastern and New Orleans tonight. That one will be a fun environment with two schools that know each other well, too. Yeah, it will. It will. And, and someone in the semifinals will be Northwestern and someone else from Louisiana. Well, there as well. you go. Well, the story of this game right now is the rebounding. 23-8 in favor of McNeese. They've grabbed nine offensive rebounds. That has led to 10 second-chance points. And their lead is three. Trying to pull off another upset and get to the semifinals. Dangerous pass. 
Scott gets it and floats it in. Leaves the follow through on the floater. Looks at his hand a little bit like, yeah, we're doing this thing together. He's in double figures for a second straight tournament game. He's averaging 19 points per his past four entering today. Fifth year senior from Miami. Lansomir Paul, first minutes for Nichols. He's been really good for them this season. The Gannon transfer from D2. Jones off the mark. They are not cashing in from three. Three for 12 now on the game. I mean, again, we talk about shot quality as a coaches, and this is not a quality shot. Yes, he probably could make it, but at a very low percentage, as there was no real action to get him open, just decided to take a three. Shoemate, he's got a first half double double already. Adds to it 13 points, 10 rebounds, 6 for 8 from the field, and McNeese has its largest lead. Yeah, he is really, really playing some really impressive basketball at this point. It's not even just anything else you can say about it other than being impressive. He is really on a mission to lead his team. Another miss from Huffman. Jones steps through on Shoemate, tried to draw some contact, rebound Francois. All McNeese right now with momentum inside two to go in the half. It's O'Day coast to coast to finish. The lead is nine and Austin Clarks needs a timeout. Yeah, you got to give so much love to this McNeese team. I mean, this is a team that lost eight or nine in a row at one point in the year and they are playing out. Arsenal and Beaumont United, that's a pretty good team that they had, but Absolutely. he had a terrific game. He made all eight of his free throws. His son looks at John and says, hey, Dad, I think we need him on the team. Sure yeah. enough, he was pretty good at the free throw line yesterday. Yes, he was. Made the clutch free throws to steal the victory, and he's played some really good basketball early in this one as well. Seven first half points. Lead is nine for McNeese. It's Jones swallowed up on a foul. And the Colonels will head to the free throw line for just the fourth and fifth time in this game. Yeah, and I think that's what Jones needs to do a little more of. He's shooting an efficient game from the floor, but he's taking a couple from long distance that he didn't have to take. But when he allows his frame and his athleticism to attack the paint, it makes it really hard on the defense of McNeese. And we said this early, McNeese doesn't have a deep team. They don't have a deep roster right now. So the idea of being able to get to the free throw line and put some people in foul trouble for McNeese is one that I think Nichols has to consider. Jones makes the first. Latrell well, Jones, who is a fifth-year senior out of New Orleans. He went to Archbishop Shaw, then College of Central Florida. He and Eduardo Delcadia played together there a year at Portland, where he averaged about 10 a game. Last year, third-team all-conference. This year, second-team all-league. Seven-point McNeese lead, final 90 seconds of the opening half. The Cowboys are still hovering around 60% for the field. Great feed down low to Thomas to finish. Getting whatever they want inside right now. Just when you thought Shoemate was just about buckets, he drives and drops a beautiful dime off to his big man. Jones pivots, can't get the roll. And he's down, and it's a five on four. O'Day skips. Scott for three. And that's off the hands of Francois out of bounds. For the hustle of McNeese, though, they are everywhere in this first half. It feels like they have a couple extra players it on does. the floor. Uh, there you see a great find for Scott, and they had another offensive rebound. I talked about the two-hand rebounds earlier. That one was one, and that's what can happen uh, in a game like this. But talk about impressive. I mean, McNeese has just really played a spirited game from the start to finish yesterday and doing the same thing so far in the first half. Final minute. You figure this is a big final minute for Nichols to get some momentum before the break. Yeah, all about the momentum. Who can go into the locker room with a little bit of extra push? Spencer's off the mark, and Nichols is now 3 for 14 from distance in the first half. A little bit of separation in the game clock and shot clock, so Nichols may have a chance to get one more possession if they're able to keep McNeese off the glass. Yeah, about a 10-second difference. Final 15 seconds now. Shot clock's down to five. Francois off on a three. Rebound tip to Spencer. Final 10 seconds. Terrell to Jones. Up in the air. Clock down to five. Delcadia rushes a three. Didn't need it. Huffman rebounds, tipped around, won't go, and that does it for the first half. Great defensive possession by both teams to end the half. Uh, we, McNeese goes into the half 
up nine and again just playing some really good those uh historic comebacks are always possible as you know so this McNeese team though it looks like a team that they do not look like they're slowing down or getting their foot off the gas anytime soon so we have been given word no eight seed has ever made the semifinals of the Southland Conference Tournament. McNeese trying to get there. They're trying to get to the semis for the first time as a program since 2012, more than a decade ago in Katy. They're up nine. And that's in and out from Francois, who knocked down a couple of first half threes. Huffman right to the cup. That's a good start for Nichols. And they're back within seven. Huffman with his third field goal guys right before halftime coach Aiken's message to his team was urgency 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 take care of the ball and I asked one of the assistant coaches what was his main message in the locker room and it was the same thing he told us at halftime which was don't be satisfied yeah thanks Bronwyn well look sometimes it's harder to play with a lead you got to keep that sense of urgency yeah I love the, I love the message at halftime that's what it's all about and again his team this team was recruited with the idea of being able to do something that Nichols hasn't done yet, which is go back to the NCAA tournament. So they know what this is all about. They've been playing for March all season long. So that's the urgency that Coach Cox is demanding from his team now. It's a six point game. There's Delcadia knocking it away. It will stay with McNeese. Yeah, I love the more aggressive style defensively, too, doing a little bit of three quarter or half court trap and. Guys sprinting all over the place, playing with that kind of energy. That's what they're going to need to get them ignited. They haven't done a great job defensively getting points off of turnovers. It's a big part of their attack. So that's something to keep an eye on for this half. Also, is just is Nichols able to get some uncontested steals or turnovers for points? Well, there's the steal, but Delcadia threw it away. Now that hurts. Would have been a transition chance. Nelson, let's see. Offensive foul. His third charge drawn. And you almost don't want to give it to him because he's already done it a couple <laughs> times. But the third one in textbook defensively, those are the... Man, they're still into it. Austin Clunch, 33 years of age. Second youngest coach in Division I college basketball. Feels like forever ago, Brian, that he was 28 years old when he first got the Nichols job. It does feel like a while ago. He almost feels like a veteran <laughs> coach now. He is. He has been so successful. 90 wins in four plus years. Latrell Jones backing in. And that's a nice move there. Nichols goes inside back-to-back -back possessions and they're within four. Yeah, and again, we talked about in the first half. Those are the type of shots that makes Nichols good offensively and that's what they have to do for the entirety of this half in order to put themselves in a position to be able to come out victorious 13 points for Latrell Jones 25th time in double figures this year Jonathan Massey has been quiet offensively today his second field goal on cue he heard you saying about being quiet he's like <laughs> I got a little something for that hey 17 points per your last five I'm gonna note it Lob it down low, Delcati, a big size mismatch on Zach Scott, but he brought the ball down in a foul. Little reach in there. Yeah, it makes it tough when you bring the ball down for a big man, but when you swipe down, referees have a tendency, whether it's an actual foul or not, when they see that swipe down, it's normally when they do call foul, but great job being scrappy defensively when you're outsized in height. Delcadia played 12 total minutes in Nichols's first three conference games. He's become a big piece, but that's a turnover. They're fifth of the game. Nichols is plus five in the turnover margin, but that's not going to offset being minus 14 in the glass. No, it is not. Scott. Off the screen from Thomas. Backtrack three. Another offensive rebound for McNeese. Scott can reload. And there is Spencer. Huffman on the drive to the cup and two more. Nine for Huffman and Nichols making a second half push. Yeah, you expected that from this Nichols team. They have championship pedigree and they are a team that is as tough as they come. And you missed it. This is a theme for them. Maybe they just take, maybe they didn't know the game started at five <laughs> like it did. Maybe they thought it started at six. The comeback Colonels doing it again. Francois answers back with a three. 
Great ball movement there by McNeese. Dangerous pass. That's off McNeese. Last touched by Francois. Seems like a big emphasis for Nichols to try to play faster here to start this second half. Yeah, done a good job in transition. One of the places they really excel, as you well know, getting out in speed and transition and being able to get to the rim. They're one of the top tempo teams in the nation. Nelson turns the corner and gets it to go. So all of their points in the paint to start the second half. Yep, you can you can tell there was a point of emphasis not only to play with urgency, but to play inside out. That is usually the most successful way to play higher percentage basketball when it comes to efficiency. 12 paint points in the first 20 minutes. Already eight in the first three and a half minutes of the second. Five point McNeese lead. Jonathan Massey watched by Hoffman. Shot clock to 10. There's Thomas on a switch with Spencer. Knocked away and taken by Nelson. In transition, Huffman to the rim. It's a one possession game. Those are the pick sixes we talk about that happen so often when you play against this Nichols team. And what they're doing defensively to cause that is they're denying a lot more. They even went and trapped the ball handler, Massey, who's not a traditional point guard. Uh, so they are trying to change up things as far as their strategy defensively and their urgency. A near knock away here and another steal. Let's see a foul first, though. They're going to get a push called against Huffman, and he can't believe it. Yeah, we will take a break. Big-time energy from the Colonels, though, to start this second half. Little things make such a difference, and i uh, got to give credit to Coach Klontz and his staff. Uh, although they are the four seed, they've just done such a good job consistently being a team that you know this time of year can cut down some nets. He went to Emory. He played for Jason Zimmerman, a terrific coach. He's won more than 300 games there. Started coaching under Paul Hewitt, then went to Clemson, a grad manager, then video services, an assistant on Richie Riley's staff at Nichols. Hired 13 days after he got the South Alabama job, and he has not looked back. Two regular season titles with the Colonels, and his team has another takeaway. It's a three on two, knocked around to Delcania, tips it to Jones, knocked around, Scott to the deck for it, and a foul on McNeese. You just said it, to the deck for it, but who is the first one to the floor, which is something, again, coaches up the track. First to the floor and the urgency that speaks to the urgency and the desire to get something done and get that 50 50 ball Here you see it tipped then a tip back to him the loose ball ends up being on the floor and Nichols was the first to the floor Which if you look at the first half of those 50 50 plays were going towards McNeese So that is a sign as the game goes on to always watch again those 50 50 plays are such important plays They don't show up in the stat sheet, but they make a difference in winning and again, how do you counteract being minus 14 on the glass? You force turnovers at a prolific rate. That's now 12 for McNeese. Can Nichols cash in? They can tie it with a three. Nelson is fouled. And now the fouls are piling up. That's already five team fouls in not even five minutes in the second half on the Cowboys. Yeah, we said in the first half that is something to watch. If this Nichols team can be aggressive to get not only the fouls to get in the bonus, but also to put McNeese in foul trouble. That is to their advantage. Shoemate just picked up his first. A lot of mopping up having to be done here to start the second half. That means a lot of bodies are on the floor. It's a good thing if you're a coach. It's a great thing. You want to see <laughs> bodies on the floor. We'll worry about injuries in the offseason. Right now, it's all about putting everything you have and emptying your tank. And again, this floor... Hosting a Southland tournament for the first time here in Lake Charles. And let's see, an offensive foul is called. Goes on Delcati on a moving screen. That's a momentum killer. Austin Clutch not happy about it. It is the sixth turnover on Nichols. Yeah, these refs, a veteran crew, have done a good, done a great job so far in this game of a high intensity, physical, a lot of fast pace to it, and they've done a great job keeping it under control. O'Day's pass finds Shoemate. And that's another turnover. Four on two break. And Spencer has it ripped away by Scott. What a defensive play. Yeah, back to back turnovers. Both teams finding a way to get that possession back. And Nichols has shown a few traps the last few times down. And they are continuing to be aggressive and change up their defenses. Scott 
Giving room for three, and he connects. Just need a little bit of room, not too much. Hey, well, we don't turn it over, McNee says. We shoot 54%. We just got to not turn it over. His first make on six tries from three. Spencer right to the rim. Rebound Shoemate, his 12th to go with his 13 points. Against Elkania, Shoemate draws a foul, count and and one. He is unstoppable. All you can do is shake your head. This, this young man, just a sophomore in this conference, preseason, first team all conference. There you see the rip through, going off one foot with a little floater, doing it in a variety of ways. Just a match up nightmare. Third team all conference last year as a freshman. And he is rolling right now. He played eight games as a true freshman at Tulsa in the 2020-2021 season. Native of Chicago. He's put on weight. He's expanded his game. And he has blossomed here in his third year of college hoops. Lead back to nine for McNeese. Their halftime margin. Three fouls on Delcadia. So Nichols goes small with Lansomir Paul. With it now. And the shot clock at 10. It's Maxwell in the lane against Shoemate. Tough fall away, and he got it. Yeah, great footwork right there. Sophomore from Jacksonville, Arkansas. Talented player. He had offers from Oral Roberts in Arkansas. Little Rock chose to come to Thibodeau because of their player development and the chance to win. Donovan O'Day for McNeese. They're four for seven to start the second half. Nichols is six for seven from the field. Scott has it poked away by Nelson. He accelerates, draws some contact, and a foul. Let's see, a block. Bonnies continue to go everywhere. Yeah, I just love the force that Nichols is playing with. Just a little bit overly aggressive on defense. Maybe a foul here or there. Maybe a little bit of a touch here or there. But they're just, again, their defense is creating their offense. And then Nelson just with the determination to say, I'm going to the basket no matter who's in front of me. And, Results in him with a trip to the line and now they are in the bonus the rest of the game 13 28 yep. remember that time uh, this Nichols team has a different Kind of attack that they can continue to do they have not taken a three this half so far I was about to say you beat me to it Barter. 15 three-point attempts in yep. the first half none in six minutes and 32 seconds of the second Merrick Nelson who has been tremendous today eight points four for five from the field his first free throws. Now this is going to be a storyline, and it has been a storyline all season long for Nichols. When Austin Plunch arrived that first year, they set the single season program record for free throw shooting. They were third best in the country, about 78%. They are all the way down this year to 65%, bottom 30 nationally. Sounds like his free throw coach must have uh, gotten another job somewhere. <laughs> I don't know about that. They can be contagious sometimes. No, absolutely. That one was pure. Nichols is a team tonight. Five for eight at the strike. And now full court pressure. Huffman, who is incredible with forcing steals. O'Day to Burze. Well, they killed about 12 seconds just getting the ball across. McNeese by six, trying to reach its first Southland Conference Tournament semi since 2012 and become the first ever eight seed to reach the semifinals. Massey and Jones falls away. Shoemate almost threw it down over the whole team. Is there a trampoline on the court that I missed? There might be. It looked like he might have jumped off of one, climbed on his back. That would have been, we had a sports center play last night in the tournament. That would have been maybe even number one on sports center. Number Look one. This. You might have needed a whole top ten dedicated to that dunk. And he is as athletic as they come. They list him at 6'7", 205. But he gets every bit out of that frame. He has so many ways to score. He's a unique player. He's a hard matchup, I think, is the way that John Aiken put it. Yeah, he has just been a, he has been a young man possessed and improved skill level improved shooting touch really looks good on his mid-range but also from free throw he was 43 percent at the line his first 25 games 79 percent his last seven that's improvement yeah that's a guy who's been in the gym that's 
without question. Jones steps back and drills a three. Only Nichols' is fourth today. That was their first three-point attempt of the second half. Austin Klotz said you got to eat your vegetables before you can have dessert. The vegetables have to be points <laughs> in the paint. Now you get a little dessert. First three-pointer of the second half. I used to hate having to do that. My kids still hate it. I don't blame them. Massey in the lane, cut off, and a foul. See if they get Jones, and they do. And that is his first. So McNeese now nearing the bonus. Another foul against Nichols, their fifth. 12-24 to play. Nichols has beaten McNeese seven straight times. Nice Inbounds play. pass to Burze to Shoemate. Waits patiently to dunk it home. Beautiful execution by John Aiken and his staff and by the team to be able to really execute on a baseline out of bounds. Those special teams make a difference. Paul blocked by Shoemate. Just got it before it got to the backboard. O'Day leads the break. Burze. Travel. Good call. Very good call. Shuffled his feet kind of on that jab after the shot fake and Shoemate you said he's 6'7 but he looks like he's about 6'9 6'10 <laughs> by the way he is playing above the rim on both ends there you see the two hand flush off of the dime and on the other end an impressive block to go get it towards the top of the square he's got 20 more points 13 more rebounds Spencer goes right at Massey that's an offensive foul good call good call these referees have just done it it's hard, to, it's hard to referee in games like this, but they're just on top of every little thing. Here you see it doesn't look as traditional, but he is really trying to stay in front of him. And just a good call and good defense by Massey. Only the seventh Colonel turnover. Dangerous inbounds pass. There were about four guys in the vicinity of a couple of inches there. These are the press break. You want to go in opposite directions. I, was I don't think say. they got the memo on that one. I'm not a genius, but I think you want to be a little more space. <laughs> the offense and all those things we talked about, but on the flip side, you have to give so much acknowledgement to McNeese. They have responded. They've made four of their last five. They've settled in. They haven't turned the ball over, and they continue to shoot 56% from the floor. McNeese the eight seed, Nichols the four seed. An eight seed has never made the Southland Conference Tournament semifinals. McNeese trying to do that in front of this Lake Charles crowd, urging them on. We're inside 12 to go. DeAndre Thomas with O'Day, Shoemate, Scott, and Massey. It's O'Day on a pull up. Rebound Spencer had it tipped out. And I think they're going to flip that call. Let's see. And they will keep it, Mickey's ball. There you see the replay. Right call. And we talked about our first female official, Miss Bianca, in the building, makes the accurate call as you watch the replay. She used to be an NBA ref as well, so she's been in a lot of big spots. First female official in the Southland Conference Tournament on the men's side ever. An amazing feat here today. Again, celebrating the 50th anniversary of Title IX. Massey, there's Nelson. There's another charge. It's his fourth. Now, the other official had a foul. Let's see. They're going to, I think, overrule this. Yeah, they're going to call it. Yeah, it will be an offensive foul. No, nope. your pardon. No, nope. I, I like the trust and the chemistry between the two refs. So often you can see those things happen where, hey, I saw this, I saw that. But again, uh, the veteran officiating crew, we talked about our first record-breaking female in this tournament, and she's made back-to-back -back calls that have been on point. Yeah, there you go. And the fourth charge <laughs> taken by, you know, I don't know if it's a Plano East thing. I used to take some charges back in the day in my did, college huh? time. So I, I appreciate what uh, Mr. Nelson's doing tonight. I'm glad that makes one of us at the table. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't pay me to take one. Seven point McNeese lead. And we have a foul. So here becomes the storyline. Nichols is in the bonus. The final 11 minutes in five seconds. Yep. They are five for eight at the free throw line. And again, they are the worst free throw shooting team in the conference. Can they get this thing rolling becomes the question. Yeah, I was just about to bring that up to you and say the same thing. We talked about getting in the free throw line. It will cause some foul trouble potentially for McNeese as they do that. But 
you can't just get there and then you're automatically given those points. You have to earn them still shot by shot. So important to see if Nichols can focus and lock in and get a little bit of momentum to make free throws as they will have more trips to the line being that they are closing closing in on the double bonus. Eduardo Delcadia goes to the line for the first time tonight. He is a 68% free throw shooter and calmly sinks the front end. A guy who started at Cloud County Community College in Kansas, then a year at College of Central Florida, then UNLV for a year. He tore his ACL in preseason last year, so Austin Clunch took him two years to get him on the court, but he's made a huge impact this season. Yeah, their most physical presence that they have on his team. The throws, second. There you go. They are now six for ten at the line as a team. It's a six-point game. Scott off the shoemate screen. They switch it with Nelson. He's trapped in the corner. And now Shoemate extended with the shot clock at 10. He's calling for help. Look for a possible trap. Shoemate pulls up. Off the mark. Francois rebounds. Threw it right to Delcadia. A three-on-one break. Huffman will soar and lay it in, and it's a four-point game. Yeah, it's like the theme of both teams. An offensive rebound happens, but then a turnover for points. Caleb Huffman coming alive. Seven of his 11 in the second half. We approach the midway point. Four-point McNeese lead. And a foul. Bonus both ways now. It'll be a free throw shooting type of contest this last 10 minutes. And here you see the offensive rebound by McNeese, but can't find the player, leaves his feet, and the big man pushing the break to his guard for easy layup. That's something he does very well. Austin Clunch likes Delconius' passing ability. He's a creative big man. His dad was a pro in Italy, so he's got that in his genes. Shoemate to the free throw line. Today, he is four for six at the strike, and he misses on the front ends. Like a turnover, they always say it. Yep, the one area of his game that he has not been as proficient is from the free throw line. Can Nichols make it a one possession game? Huffman, long three, you bet. Caleb Huffman coming alive, and he's got 16. More dessert for the Colonels, able to take a dribble rhythm three and hit nothing but the bottom. He's got 12 second half points. Scott passes up on a three. Ball knocked loose, taken by Terrell. Nichols can regain the lead right here. They last led it 15 to 13. Might have got away with a little bit of a carry. You're right. Like he lost it and refs didn't see it. Crowd wanted to let him know about it. Hoffman. It's Huffman on a baseline drive for the lead. Talk about a first step, a burst of speed for Huffman and Nichols in the lead. 14 second half points for Huffman. 8 nothing Colonel run. Austin Clonch telling the whole Colonel faithful to get loud. The Colonel's on top for the first time since the... Austin Clonch made the point a little while ago. This conference has a lot of... Bucket getters. Guys, you give the ball to, they just find a way. Demarcus Sharp, the player of the year. Yep. Jamonte Black for Northwestern State. There, there are so many. Jordan Johnson of New Orleans. Huffman, one of those kind of microwave oven guys. Yep. And Nichols on top for the first time since early first half. Christian Shoemate for McNeese. Right to the rim, missed it. Spencer couldn't rebound though. Massey gets it back. Puts it Gotta in. Count will the they bucket. count it? Will they no. count it? I don't think they will, but. The best offensive rebounding team in the conference continues to have that relentless pursuit. On okay. Job so, well done. Great explanation. Yeah, so we just got confirmation. It's a one and one, no basket. He got fouled before the act of shooting. They just missed the front end. And they miss another. McNeese. Now five for 11 at the free throw line. Nichols a one-point lead in the ball. Huffman has taken over this game, and it continues. 16 second-half points. He's made all seven of his shots in the half. Yeah, it's like, again, we talked about it. They've done this in the second half the last three games now. 
And he is, he was the player to watch for a reason. He's first team all conference for a reason. Has the ability to take over a game, in particularly when it's winning time in the second half, as he has done in this contest tonight. Foul called against Nichols. Another one and one shooting foul. They've missed the last two front ends of one and ones, which, as you mentioned, are like turnovers. Why is it like a turnover? Because you essentially don't get an opportunity to get those points. So, so what did we say about Donovan O'Day? John Aiken went over saw him in the state title game after they had missed three front ends of one and ones in this game last year That's the guy you want to settle down the troops a little bit. Oh, he's, both. he's cool as the other side of the pillow He did it last night to seal the victory and here he is calming his team down with those last two He was six for eight yesterday at the line. He's ten for his last twelve the last couple games One point Nichols edge Huffman for Delcadia right back to him He's got 16 second half points. And he's off the mark from three. A little bit of a heat check right there. He's starting to get fouled, yeah. Their first miss from three in the second half. They were two for two. Scott cut off. McNeese has gone cold without a field goal going on four minutes. After Gotta they find shot. a way to get the ball to shoot, Let him do what he does from the perimeter. Let him attack and make the play. Got a mismatch with Huffman. They switch it with Nelson. Shot clock to five. Rifle feet stolen away. It's Pierce Spencer. And he slows things down. And Austin Claunch will call a timeout. The Colonel defense has picked up. They have forced 19 McNeese turnovers. With 11 of those coming in the second half. It could be a tournament MOP. You can see those numbers flipping. You would probably say, yeah, it's been him in attack mode in the second half. Oh, absolutely. Not settling. Again, doing what he does, but getting to the paint and making it hard for them to have to guard him off the dribble. When you are as talented as he is, you know that the other team can't guard you one-on-one. -on -one. It's up to you to just decide that you're going to get to the basket no matter what. Jones is running mate. And now Nelson in the lane. He was hit. Spencer tries a long three. And the rebound to Jones. Fresh 20 for Nichols. Only the Colonel's fourth offensive rebound. Huffman. And they call it travel. Ninth Colonel turnover. There's still plus nine in turnover margin. Yeah, and on that one, I, I like the fact that he wasn't going to settle. I think he's embodied exactly what Coach's message was at halftime. That sense of urgency and, again, being on the attack. That time turns down a three ref called him for a travel, but the mentality was still in the right place Nichols by a point Colonels have been to at least the semifinals in the last couple of conference tournaments trying to win the whole thing for the first time since 1998 McNeese hasn't been in the semi since 2012 Scott for three gives McNeese the lead back big basket by number 15 his second three, both in the second half. Huffman drives. We got a foul on the floor. It's team foul number nine. So it will be a one and one. Another look at this. Zach Scott three. How good has he been the last couple days? Oh, he's been so good. He's had a three at that same spot. If you remember early in this half, he had two shots he missed in that exact same almost spot. And there you say, third time's a charm for number 15. He was 0 for 3 from distance in the first half. He's made two of his four in the second. Huffman front ends. Missed it. Ball is loose. Nelson dives to it. And let's see a tie-up. Another, that's another winning play by Nelson. Another championship level winning play from Nelson. Again, these plays don't show up in the stats but look at him diving in between two McNeese players, sacrificing his body, saying, that's my ball. That is the sense of urgency again. You talk about a team connected to their coach. You think they believe in their coach. He talked about, I came to Nichols because of the relationship with the head coach. I wanted to have that relationship. I love this staff, and I'm going to give everything I have tomorrow in that game is what he told me yesterday when I saw him, and he is doing just that. He's already got his master's in finance. He's got a super high IQ, according to Austin Clunch. A leader for this team in game 130 of his career here today. Trying to push Nichols to the semis. But he turns it over there. 
trying to claim that Delcania got pushed. It becomes another Nichols turnover. Yeah, he felt like he got grabbed maybe on that other arm, and I think that was an accurate no call. Again, the referees have done a terrific job in this game. Nichols now in a scoring drought. And that's surpassed two and a half minutes. McNeese by two. Shumay trying to post up. Couldn't get position on Delcadia. It's Massey. Got clock to 10. Shoemate going right at Nelson. Takes him inside. Kept his pivot foot. Missed it. Tipped up and in by Francois. Ooh, Francois climbing the ladder. Going up top. Almost got a tip dunk himself, but he'll take the two points. Who does Nichols go to now? Jones swerving inside, scoops it up and in. Difficult shot from Jones, who's got 18. Yeah, nice take by Jones. Again, he was he was one of the main ones settling for those tough twos and threes in the first half, and he has also been on attack mode, getting downhill. Nice right-hand scoop finish on the left side. McNeese has led in this game by as many as nine. That was the halftime margin. Nichols has not led by more than four. And again, they have won seven straight head-to-head -head in this series. But head-to-head -head series can be misleading. They've had so many close games over the last couple of years. Yeah, these teams, two teams, very familiar. They've had a lot of competitive battles. And these two coaches, we talked about it in the open with Bronwyn Story. There is a familiarity because their philosophies both derive from Richie Riley, who they worked under at Nichols. Uh, on the same staff and uh, Richie Riley and the South Alabama team currently playing to go to the dance for the first time in his time as a coach and they are up four at the half over Louisiana Lafayette. There you go. Well, they're both monitoring that. And oh, by the way, John Aiken has never beaten Austin Clunch as a head coach who's 4-0 against him. So he's trying to flip that script. McNeese breaks pressure. Or Great. did they? A backcourt violation. Wow. Another great call. I mean, referees are on top of all the little things in this game. Again, a former coach saying the referees are making good calls, but look at right there. You see him come from the backcourt to the front court. Have to have established your feet in the front court before you touch the ball. A 20th McNeese turnover. Nichols can tie or regain the lead. Five to go here at the Legacy Center. First time the Southland Conference Tournament has been here. It's Huffman, and he's called for a travel. Looks like he looks like he lost his footing on the baseline. Yep, just kind of lost his feet and traveled a few possessions ago in that same little area. And the theme of this game has been rebounds and turnovers. It's plus ten for Nichols in the turnover category, plus nine for McNeese on the offensive glass. So those are again the common things for these teams and. Both teams in the double bonus the rest of the way. Free throws will also be affected. Bron, when you've got more. The travel before that last one, Coach Quanch actually asked the ref, is the ball wet? He thought maybe that was the cause of the slippage. The ref kind of felt it and dried it off. So we'll see. Maybe that is the cause of these travels going forward. Yeah, I've been keeping an eye on you here, Bron, and I'm worried you got to keep your footing here. Players flying everywhere. We have seen bodies all over the place. What do you expect in a winner take winner go home situation in a Southland tournament trying to get to the semis? The regular season champ Corpus Christi awaits the winner here. Donovan O'Day to the free throw line. This is a double bonus situation. And he has been so good from the charity stripe. Made yeah. Both of his free throws today, he's got nine. Yeah, and other players had to step up in the absence of starting point guard being out, and uh, he's played a large majority of point guard in this game and yesterday as well. Just, again, stepping up in the face of adversity. You love to see those stories of players who may have had different roles, may not have had as many minutes. Then they get the opportunity, and they step up when it matters. Both free throws in. McNeese's lead back to four. It's Jones working in the lane on O'Day. Leans in and scores right over him. And he's got 20 to match Huffman for a team high. Yeah, Jones is another guy like Huffman who is a guy who can get a bucket at any point in time. So those two guys have really carried the load here for the Colonels. 40 of the Nichols, 63 points. Scott, yard free. O'Day on the drive. 
Wraps it around inside, and a foul. Ooh. Nichols can't believe it. A little, it's on little bit of a late whistle. Sorry to jump in on you. No, you're good. I was just going to note that's four on Delcadia. Yeah, you can see the behind by that many. I don't know if it's what gets our guys going or whatnot, but it certainly can't be easy on him as a coach. No doubt. It has to be frustrating the way yep. that his team has started games. There's something about, though, the, the makeup of Nichols, and that may pay, pay off for them being the four seed, as we talked about. Something about this makeup of this team, they like backs against the wall, kind of being down, kind of being doubted, so they're responding, and uh, we have a great last four minutes headed our way. Another terrific game for true freshman Donovan O'Day. 12 points, 5 for 6 from the lock. Three-point McNeese edge. Trying to become the first ever eight seed to reach the semifinals in the Southland men's tournament. Jones right to the rack for two. Look at that burst of speed. Doesn't get the foul, but impressive drive and finish. 22 points for Jones at team high. Huffman's got 20. Nichols down one. Trying to set up a rematch of last year's semis with Corpus Christi. Shoemate. Who's got 20 points and 14 rebounds against the smaller Huffman inside a sidestep and draws a foul Probably not the worst thing in the world if you're Nichols to foul him. Yeah, I mean you almost want to get it out of his hands though He's just finding a way <laughs> Even though everyone in the gym knows what he's about to do He's just still finding a way to get to the free throw line and draw a foul So he's only four for seven at the line today. You can see his season numbers. He is much improved however yeah, I, think he's, I think he's looking more like the guy as this thing closes as you said is improved and is more like 70% in his stretch Versus that early 40 something percent because the way he shoots the ball in his mid-range you can tell he has touch Yeah, yeah again, it's about 79% his last eight games And that includes yesterday in round one against a and Commerce where he went six for eight at the line part of his 28 points yeah, he's a guy that's lived in the gym. You can just tell by the way that he is playing with the confidence and the way he's delivering on, again, those short range, degree of difficulty, jump shot. One thing to clean up, they did just call that foul on Nelson. They switched it. So he's got four. Spencer's got four. delcani has got four. Three Colonel starters, all with four fouls and two calm clutch free throws for Shoemate, who's got 22 and 14 and a three-point McNeese lead. Well, this is that time of the game, too, where you have to go to your closers. You got to start going. It's winning time. You got to start going to your best players and letting them do what they do. Huffman off the bounce in the lane. Difficult shot. He got it again. And he's got 16, make it 18 in the second half. Yeah, we just talked about going to your closers. Huffman's the closer for Nichols, letting them do what they do. And there you see him doing it well. What a game this has turned into. Couple of longtime rivals. 101st all time meeting and a steal. It's Spencer. Hit a head pass to Jones. Blocked by Shoemate and a foul. And Jones to the line. He can give Nichols the lead back. Yeah, this is the part of the game where you do miss having your point guard on the floor. A jump pass always lets the defense know they have an opportunity to get a steal. The Colonels were ready for it, jumped on it, and it has led them to a trip to the line from another closer that they have that has over 20 points in this game, Jones. 22 for Latrell Jones. His eighth game this season of 20-plus. He had five in his first two years of Division I basketball between last year and the one year at Portland in the West Coast Conference. It just speaks to the development in this guy's game. He and Huffman both, they have so many different ways they can score. Yeah, and again, we talked about it, we've said it. These young men represent what it means to be about buckets. 10 of 16, 8 of 12, both extremely efficient. And if you take out the first half kind of poor shot choices, the shot quality, their percentage has been even higher on the shots when they've taken the right one. Nichols did not shoot the ball well last year in the semifinal loss to Corpus Christi. They were 6 for 30 from 3. They struggled in the NIT loss as well, their first NIT appearance against SMU. Jones didn't struggle. He averaged 19 points in their two postseason games. Something about this stage, this guy rises to the top. Yeah, something about it. in his blood, certain players have it. Well, when March hits, their blood boils a little bit different, as does their production and performance. But he misses on the free throw. 
And the Colonels have left six points at the line. They've only made half their free throws. Six for 12. One more for Jones, who is a 65% free throw shooter. He's three for five tonight. Got that one to tie it for the second time in this game. Deadlocked at 68 and 245 to go. Spot in the semifinals to face regular season champion Corpus Christi on the line. Massey off the shoemate screen. Cut off well by Jones. Nowhere to go. Poked out of bounds by Delcadia. The ball pressure has really picked up for Nichols of late. Yeah, I love how they're getting passing lanes and really denying. Uh, McNeese has not scored a field goal in the last two minutes and 41 seconds, whereas Nichols has scored their last four field goals, and they are feeling good and starting really getting the passing lane. And again, not having a true point guard is affecting them. Massey floats it up and off. Thomas on the offensive glass got poked in the eye. And they back it out for a fresh 20. Yeah, the best part of Nick of McNeese's game is not turning it over. Whether they make it, they're shooting 53%, but when they miss it, they're getting the offensive rebound majority of the time, and they are programmed to go get it. So the big thing is don't turn it over. Get a shot up, and you got a chance. Massey, difficult shot, and a shot clock violation. This has been textbook defense and textbook Nichols basketball these last couple defensive trips. Yeah, last couple defensive and on the offensive end. They've made their last four, and they're getting the ball to the right players. Again, it's a close game. Just part of the game. Other guys may make intangible plays. Great steal right Careless there. Careless turnover. It's Scott coast to coast. Blocked by Delcadia, but a foul. And Scott a chance to go to the line and give McNeese the lead back. And that's five on Delcadia. Haven't said Scott's name in a while. Had a good first half, had a good second half yesterday. But taking the page out of Nichols' book. Gets a deflection and steal and fouls out the big man for the Colonels. That's a big loss. Delcani only had one point today, but he had three rebounds. He had five assists. He was really a good playmaker for them. So Ryan Maxwell enters and will play the biggest 148 of his young career. Zach Scott is a 75.5% free throw shooter this season. He has not been there tonight. Last year he was 92%. I think Latrell Jones has some blood on his arm. So I'll get that wrapped up. Again, we've still got one more semifinal, Southeastern and New Orleans. That should be a good one as well. This crowd has been fun. I think that crowd will be very fun tonight, tonight too. Yeah, tip your hat to the Southland. We like to see it. First time in Lake Charles. The new and logo then, debuting. Yeah, new logo. Done a great job with the branding of the Southland Conference and beautiful floor. I saw one coach talk about this is the best floor design of any conference tournament. So maybe that's something they can take a vote on later. That's high praise. McNeese in the front. 17 for Zach Scott. Cool, calm, collected. He's playing in game number 145 of his career, two years at Florida Gulf Coast, his third year in Lake Charles. He could have left. He stuck it out. Loves this team. Left that one short, though. Nichols down a point. Minute 45 to go. Can they find a way? They were down by nine at the half. They've grabbed the lead. Now trying to take it back. Latrell Jones. Steps in, draws contact. That's a veteran move, and he's got free throws. Again, we talk about closers. Not only can they make can he make a field goal, but he can draw a foul. And because he's such a threat offensively, here you see him driving, kind of stopping at the elbow, gets him in the air, doesn't jump into him though, just tries to jump forward and finish it, and is able to get the contact. He's four for six at the line. Nichols is a team seven for thirteen, only fifty-four percent. We're tied. Austin Clonch has never been to the NCAA tournament as a coach, period. His yeah, team would have to him. To... Sorry, go ahead. No, I'm saying his team has to win three times to get there as yeah. the four seed. They have fought back in the second half. No, yeah, talking to him last night, he just talked about, you know, this team and being able to just go into it, play free, 
and go not worry about anything other than one game at a time. But he said they will be close games. And he was right. One point, Nichols Edge. Our sixth lead change. Massing in a torture chamber with Hoffman, and now it's Shoemake. Size mismatch on Spencer. Will they bring the help? They do. The cutter is Francois. Counted for the lead. And a chance for one more. What a big time pass, but even more big time cut. And everything is going on. Everyone's focused on the player of the game for McNeese. Beautiful cut and a pass on the money and able to draw not only the finish, but draw the contact. What a big time play by number 22. Francois in double figures with 10 points. Seven in the second half. He's only taken eight free throws all season. He's made six of them. Let's make it seven to nine. And a two point McNeese cushion with 70 seconds left. What a game this has been. It's loud in here, folks. Caleb Huffman, three for the lead. No. Rebound, Scott. And we are inside the final minute. McNeese trying to become the first ever eight seed to reach the Southland Conference Tournament semis. Got a 30 second difference between the clocks. Shoemate sets the screen. Shot clock at five. Scott in the lane. Spins through with a scoop shot count it. It's a goal tens. And McNeese by four. I mean, that was just that was just outstanding patience by Scott to not force it, not shoot up a hurry shot, but take his time and be able to step through right there and be able to draw the goal tin. That was a huge basket by McNeese. They're loud. They're on their feet. Does Nichols have one last gasp? Spencer to the rim, and he's fouled. That's probably the best case scenario. Probably the best case scenario to stop her. Rebound is tipped, nearly went down. It's loose. Who's it going to? McNeese. And Nichols created a great second chance. They just couldn't secure it. They did. Timeout coming, but one possession game with 23 seconds left. This is the March Madness scenario. Just get into basketball. I see you've been watching some basketball. <laughs> a little bit. I've also been learning from you for two days. <laughs> I'm getting a master class here, my friend. 23.3. Got to inbound. Looking, looking. Lofts it in to Massey. Will they trap him? They do. You don't want to foul Scott, but There's they do. There's that window. There's that window about five seconds. They did a good job, though. That's about how you want to play it. You have to try to get that steal. They're so good at getting steals and turnovers, as we talked about. McNeese has turned it over 22 times. Never been done in the Southland Conference Tournament as an eight seed to go to the semis. You have to give uh, this program uh, so much shout out, so much love, and so much respect. Zach Scott to make it a two possession game. And he doesn't. It stays three. I would need some water after that, too. I would need more than that. 18.2 <laughs> to go. Zach Scott sitting on 19 points. Give him 20 and a two possession game. And a bad pass from Nelson. It goes right by Spencer. And the Colonels turn it over for the 10th time in the second half. Wow. Looks like just straight miscommunication there. Yeah, you just look at it. It's easy to play, no defense. I think Spencer took his eyes off the ball for just a second, and in that time period, I don't, I don't even necessarily think that was uh, Nelson's fault. Maybe not anybody's fault, but just a miscommunication where Spencer took his eyes off of Nelson for just a second, and the ball delayed. Scott not only gets the free throw, but he gets the steal. Now he's back at the line. He has missed two free throws in the second half. Five-point game. This raucous crowd behind their Cowboys. 
You can see Pierce Spencer who has fouled out. One more. And now it's six. Nichols now does need threes. 15 seconds. They got to go. Terrell finds Huffman. It's Nelson. Dropped it. Got it back. Terrell will launch a three. It's blocked by Scott. Massey secures. And that will do it. The McNeese Cowboys in Lake Charles are off to the Southland Conference Tournament semis for the first time since 2012. They are the first ever eight seed to reach the semis.